Every time I add stuff to my shelf, I run out of places to put my coffee. Today's video is sponsored by Ren. And I really hope that's not a teaser for another film. Honestly, one was enough. Teaser for another film? For another film? Hello lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today, yes, we are going to be looking at what it turns out is the second part of a two-part short film series filmed in the Answers in Genesis Museums, the Creation Museum, and the Ark Encounter. If you haven't seen the first video I did on Night of the Creation Museum, I recommend you watch that first. You want to get to grips with the plot and the characters. Gosh, it's very complicated. There's a lot going on. While we're here, I shall also mention, if you do enjoy hearing me gently criticise uh, weird religious movies, I was on the God Awful Movies podcast. So you should go and check that out. We watched, we watched Holocaust 2000 with Kirk Douglas and more nudity than you would expect. It's really funny. Uh, if you've never listened to God Awful Movies, you definitely should. They're very brilliant, but especially the one that I'm in. Thank you. Evolutionists say that dinosaurs actually farted themselves to death, and uh, climate change is what killed them. Climate change killed the dinosaurs. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> if you're anything like me, the climate crisis probably stresses you out on the regs. Despite what the biblical literalists will tell you, no one is coming down to magically save the planet. We are the only ones who can make a difference. I'm forever looking for new ways to support the climate, to support projects that are climate positive. So I am very pleased to be able to introduce you to Wren. Wren is a really simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. There are multiple ways you can do this through Wren. The website has their own calculator where you can calculate your carbon footprint, get advice on how to reduce it, things you can change in your lifestyle to reduce the impact that you have. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution, you get updates from all the really awesome causes that you support. Wren is really, really open about their financials. You get to see exactly what your money is going on, every tree planted, every ton of carbon offset. It's all there for you to see. The projects are really cool to read about in general because of the way they utilize new technology to support the climate. One of my favourite ones at the moment is Clean Cooking Fuel for Refugees. This project supports a company called Mandulus Energy, which is transforming waste into clean fuel. So they purchase waste like rice husks, uh, groundnut shells, maize cobs, stuff like that from nearby farms. That waste gets put through a machine and is transformed into small cylinders that can be used as fuel. That fuel is then distributed among refugees in northern Uganda, where it's burned in efficient stoves. Please do head to the website and check out the other projects that they're supporting. They're really, really cool. Please check out Ren via the link down below. Have a look at their projects. Consider supporting them. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you so much for listening and for supporting the environment. Thank you to Ren for sponsoring this video. Back to the Ark Encounter. So we're back. Just as a quick recap, Night of the Creation Museum, Eric Hovind, aka Derek, took on a new job as a night guard. Weirdly, he didn't know what he was doing. It was all very strange. He showed up in his, like, midlife crisis car and did a bad job of being a night guard. He fell asleep and had a weird experience in which Tim Chaffee kept materialising and teleporting him around the museum, teaching him about creationism. Towards the end, he told Derek that he needed to start taking this creation stuff seriously, otherwise he would never wake up, and then some emotional blackmail about his dead mum and his son. At the very end, after selling off his own books, <laughs> Jim asked if Derek was free to do a shift at their other museum, the Ark Encounter which I foolishly jibed was hopefully not a reference to a second film, but yeah, it totally was. So that's what we're doing today. He was off to pick up his son, give him a dinosaur DVD, and tell him all about his first job before going off to the Ark Encounter for his second experience working at Answers in Genesis, which is where we open today. We open again with another fancy time-lapse. Reminder that in the first part, Eric told us that he filmed this all on his phone. Obviously, some of this footage does not come from a mobile phone. <laughs> the titles are done the same way as before. 2D titles projected into the 3D museum space. I still think it looks kind of nifty. It's kind of a cool way to show off the different areas. This museum has more wax humans than the last one did. So it kind of looks like, hey, this is Eric Hovind. You wish, mate. They're clearly doing this on purpose as a little bit of fun, because they make the tall, bold guy Tim Chaffee's credit. Although he appears to be, I assume, an evil Roman? 
So that's fun. I really hate this font. It looks like somewhere between Papyrus and like Bradley Hand. I don't know exactly what it is, but I hate it. Again, I have to say that Eric really downplayed the scale of the production when he introduced the first half. Like a lot of people clearly worked really hard on this. The sound design in the opening is kind of good. Like you can hear the sound of the ship creaking and moving, but it's quite subtle. I feel bad that these potentially quite talented people are working on this conspiracy nonsense that no one will watch. It's a shame. We continue flitting around the ship and dinosaur! If you were worried that the Ark Museum, that's not gonna have any dinosaurs, downer. You were wrong. Either young earth creationists are mildly obsessed with dinosaurs, or probably more likely, they know that it's a really easy way to get kids' attention. Anyway, dinosaurs on the Ark confirmed. It really ramps up fast from like, relatively sensible human beings through animals to dinosaurs. And then there's like a straight up dragon with like golden horns. <laughs> I can't wait to find out how this is meant to be historical. All the wax works, by the way, and all the art we've seen so far, white as hell. Only white people on the Ark. And they have the gall to have a section on how evolution is racist in one of their museums. Jokes. Derek's back! His midlife crisis car pulls into a fresh new car park, but this time he's wearing a hat. He drops his keys for a presumed comedy moment that isn't at all funny and then immediately gets on the phone to expose it again. I forgave that in the first film because the length of a short film like this means that kind of exposition can be a useful tool but he didn't need to do it fucking twice. It's also a pointless conversation just to make Answers in Genesis look good. He's chatting to his son Ricky, and he's talking about how thanks to this new job, he might get to hang out every single weekend. Answers in Genesis are true heroes. Bringing the family together, humbly. Again, Derek doesn't seem to really know what his job is. Yeah, it's garden museums or something. Yes, Derek, you're a night guard. You literally did a shift yesterday. <laughs> I guess he did sleep through most of it. How is this man employed? Derek is so excited to be guarding Noah's Ark. He enters through the gift shop where we're introduced to Gabrielle and oh my god, that is the most tasteless crucifix I've ever seen. I can't explain exactly why, but Eric just looks wrong in a baseball cap. So weird. Anyway, Derek is off to find Jim. Apparently he's in the book section, probably plugging his own merch again. Derek is immediately like, can I call you Gigantor? because I guess we're doing goofy foot-in-mouth protagonist, except they forgot to write in any charm. Jim has the best comeback in the world. Uh, sure, dum-dum. We're calling Eric Hovind dum-dum from now on. Tim awkwardly stumbles over his lines and nobody thinks to reshoot or cut it. And it's time for another museum tour with Jim and dum-dum. There is no fooling around now that dum-dum's had his first taste of creationism. We are straight into the hard questions. He straight up asks Jim if he really believes that this whole place was built by a 900-year-old dude all by himself. I'm a little concerned that he might think this museum is actually the Ark. Jim responds with a, ha <laughs> no. His family probably helped, or he hired construction workers. What happened to the construction workers? This is a question that will haunt me through the rest of the movie. Did they just die even though they were regular people who helped God's plan? Anyway, Noah wasn't 900, he was in his 500s. Duh. Jim's taking the opportunity once again, not to explain the layout of the building or Dum Dum's responsibilities here, but to educate him on the next level of this conspiracy theory. He asks Derek, or Dum Dum, if he knows anything about the Great Flood and reminds him of Adam and Eve. Derek is so dumb, he's like, oh, the naked people! It was yesterday! Do answers in Genesis really think non-Christians don't know who Adam and Eve are? Education time from Jim. Adam and Eve were naked, and then they sinned. God made them clothes, and sin brought death into the world. Now, if we take for granted that Answers in Genesis' estimate of when the Flood began is correct, 2348 BC, that puts it in the Neolithic era, the Late Stone Age. Average life expectancy at that time was 22 to 33. So Noah was doing bloody well. Eventually the world became so bad and so violent that God judged everyone with a Flood. Damn, why are these people I created so violent? Guess I'll kill them all. So he told Noah to build the ark big enough for all the animals and eight people. Grand Canyon alert! If you had that on your bingo cards, please mark them now. We're back at the, is it easy to bend rock argument that we've heard from many a creationist in our time. But of course, Dum Dum does not have the wherewithal to conduct his own research. So he's just like, 
Wow. Jim's off, he's so excited that his new recruit is such an easy sell. He playfully reminds Derek not to fall asleep. Good luck with that one, mate. Now it's night time, and Derek is stalking around the museum with his torch, looking in at the dinosaurs that apparently survive just fine in tiny wooden cages. He's looking around, he's playing with his torch, the music is jovial and plummy, and then Dum Dum decides to throw his murder weapon-sized torch up into the air and try and catch it. Guess what happens? Obviously he misses and hits his head in one of the worst stunts I've ever seen, by the way. But I think it's for the best, because I can't see how he could have actually done that without breaking his fingers. He's knocked out with one knee awkwardly upright, and that means it's time for the weird creationist visions to occur. Derek wakes up to the sound of thunder and creaking. The boat starts swaying from side to side, eventually tossing Derek back and forth like we're on the bridge of the Enterprise. He finds himself once again at Dream Jim's feet, who explains to Derek, uh, that's Jim, not his feet, that the flood is happening! Now! The animals are all drowning, mountaintops are 20 feet underwater, but it's okay, because Noah and the gang chilled out on the Ark for a few months until the planet dried out. I hope he's going to explain how that happened. Dum Dum asks Jim how millions of species could have fit on the Ark. Do not worry, fragile viewer. Answers in Genesis have done all the calculations. They know exactly how much space all the animals needed, and they didn't need to house millions of species at all. Just 1,300 kinds or 6,744 animals. I do not have the time or the stamina to go through the list, but if anybody's interested, it is on the website. If you have the time or the inclination to go through and work out what they inevitably missed out, let me know. I suspect they don't have a plaque in the museum that explains how eight people looked after almost 7,000 animals. Instead of the clicky teleport trick from the last film, this one uses flashes of lightning to move around the museum, which is fine, but it is a bit jarring when you were in one place and then suddenly there's a dinosaur in your face. There's a song in there somewhere. Obviously the bit that catches Dum Dum's attention is the list of dinosaurs. Are you telling me there were dinosaurs on the Ark? Yes, Derek. You were looking at them 20 seconds ago. In fairness though, he has hit his head since then. But still, Jim explains that of course they had dinosaurs on the Ark. When they were small. Derek wants to know how the people survived on the Ark. He never asks how the animals survived. I guess we're not worrying about that. Which takes us to, I guess, the Ark living quarters? Where Jim is like, well, why wouldn't they have made it a plush living space with nice hanging curtains and cushions and all that shit? Derek finally asks the only important question, is there any evidence for all this? And we are pinged to another part of the museum. Do you know where this is found? No. It's in front of you. In huge letters. Dum dum. Jim's amazing proof is this. Do you think the Earth might have a lot of water that could have caused a flood? Checkmate, atheists. And he slips in a little remark about how most people don't believe in the flood because of our biases. This from a man with unwavering faith in an old anthology of myths that influence his every belief. Then I guess they forgot to record Derek and Jim for this scene, so we look at the sea for way too long, while Jim explains exactly why God had to kill everyone. It's called judgment. Yeah, Derek. I'd call it hypocrisy by a mad tyrant myself, but to each their own. He reads some of Genesis 6 about how people were just too dang wicked. Even the construction workers who helped build Noah's Ark. Continually just thinking of evil, nothing else. Not measuring planks or anything. This might be my favourite part of the Ark Encounter. The examples of people being wicked. Look at them enjoying music, dancing, laughing. Those bastards. God regrets making humans, so much for God doesn't make mistakes. So that's why he had to elaborately drown everyone and all the animals on the planet. Even children. Every single person from tiny newborn infant to sweet elderly women. All evil had to be destroyed. Or except Noah's family, I guess. I fucking hate this story. Suddenly, Dum Dum is just suspended in black. And then they do this weird zoom in and out. I don't know why the fuck they do this. I assume it's to emphasize Derek's realization that, oh no, today's world is bad and wicked. Do we all deserve to die? Which is a great example of the paranoia and guilt that this kind of conspiracy instills. Regardless, the zoom thing looks crappy and stupid. I think maybe they had to film this later because Jim's voice is off screen and Derek is just on his own in the dark. Like maybe they had to film this bit in somebody's basement. I don't know, it's super weird. Jim's like, yeah, it does deserve judgment. 
actually hate this world. God is going to judge us. But he left a way for us to be saved. Spoiler alert, it's Jesus. And now for some reason, Derek has to find Gabby if he ever wants the truth. I guess Gabby from Answers in Genesis is some kind of prophet? Derek goes around introducing himself to the waxworks, and I was going to make a comment about the ridiculousness of repeating this joke with nobody around to hear it, and then I remembered that I talk to inanimate objects all the time. What do you think of the film, Quacko? Derek briefly stops to flirt with Ham, but is having no luck finding Gabby. Instead, he finds the teddy bear he had an earlier slapping contest with. Why? Who the fuck knows? Here we have the obligatory running around the museum at night scene. It looks fun to run around. It looks shiny and slidey. Just imagine this place as one of those kids run around indoor park things, but when they have a grown up night with like a pop up bar? Sick. Derek seems to be losing his voice, I guess, from all the yelling at nothing, probably. Sheesh. Gabrielle reappears in the most sinister way possible and beckons Dum Dum to follow her. Seriously, it's like they were trying to make her look evil. The best bit of this scene is when she disappears, but her shadow is still there. Dum Dum is led to a comic book style picture about the door of the Ark, and Tim Chaffee starts narrating to explain the importance of doors in the Bible. Jesus was also a door. Oh, Jim's here. His voice really carries. Blah, blah, Jesus is the narrow door to everlasting life. Many people choose the broad door to destruction. Like the people who trust in science. Fools. Jim once again tells Derek he must decide, and Derek goes super serious. Suddenly, we're back at the Creation Museum, and Derek is having a literal argument with himself. Good Derek, the one so easily convinced by his pep talks from Jim. He argues that creationism makes so much sense, scientists are just biased. He tells off bad Derek, the atheist one, for believing in evolution because what has it done for us? That's not really how facts work, Derek. You can't just pick the one that's most convenient to you. Oh. Because it wouldn't be a Christian movie without the worst straw man ever, Derek tells himself off for blaming God for his mum's cancer, which subsequently ruined all of his relationships. And naughty atheist Derek is like, uh, I just want to have fun, thanks. Obviously, Tragically, newly awoken creationist Derek wins and snaps his atheist counterpart out of existence, thus leading him to finally wake up. Very subtle metaphor there, Eric. I see what you did. Gabby and Jim find Derek on the floor and are like, hey dude, are you okay? <laughs> but Derek's gotta go tell his ex-wife that he's a creationist and believes in God now. I want a third movie where it turns out he's still an atheist and he's like really embarrassed by his reaction to a concussion. He gets in the car and puts his hat back on Eric, no! I don't know if this is intentional, but Derek has been acting really crazy since he decided to believe in God. He calls Sarah and is like, Remember that preacher you wanted me to talk to? Give me his number, I gotta speak to him right now! Derek is like, Everything you've been telling me is true, I'm huge into Jesus now. And the movie ends, comically abruptly. He doesn't even drive away this time, it's just over. So the moral of the story is, Scientists are stupid because bias, and being an atheist makes you unhappy, so you might as well believe in a literal interpretation of Genesis. They definitely used up most of the story beats in Creation Museum. This one was a lot weaker. There was a lot of filler. A lot of the shots did not really gel together. A lot of stuff didn't make sense. Some of it was randomly voiceover, despite the whole rest of it being told from Derek's perspective. This one is definitely the worst of the two. I hope you enjoyed this little rundown of Night at the Ark Encounter. Thankfully, there were just two. I cannot be caught out again. <laughs> Do consider giving this video a cheeky like, leave a comment down below, maybe share it if you found it fun. All of that really, really helps. Before we go, as always, I would like to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to my giant chickens over on Patreon. 100 duck-sized wolves, Aaron Spear, All Tag, Amalgam of Neuroses, Amber, Azku, Baked Bads, Burt Whitehead, Mike Merns, Chantel, Chris Simpson, Connie Wright, Conla Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla, Curious Quacker, Danny, Denny5252, Dr. Mint, Eamon Sheridan, L, Fay the Succubus, Fulcrum, Gaming Ridge, Gay of Reckoning, George Bush, Gravy, 
Henry Curtis, Izzy, Jan Bojarp, Jason Metcalf, Joe Rowe, John Fry, John Smith, Kent Woodward, Chris Convaga, Lizzie Gale, Lynn Dobbs, Mattis McChicken Nuggetus, Miles Tegg, Mr. Creosote, Nerd Fiction, Ninja Red, Peter Kirouac, Plux, Psyched Dude, Kike, Racing Pig, Sarah Shavi, Sean, Simping on Emma Thorne, Seriously, Supreme Potato 471, Tank Low, Taxman, Thalia Says Trans Rights, The Enchanter formerly known as Tim, The Myth Vision Podcast, Thomas V. Lohmeyer, Tracy O'Raw, Valerie, Wasatch Witch, and Dave Kircher. Thank you so much for all your support, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon.